Well, let's uh, get a check on how markets close today. Stocks taking a breather from the rally of 2019 for a second day in a row. The Nasdaq was today's biggest loser, falling nine-tenths of one percent. The Dow falling 86 points, or a third of one percent. And the S&P 500 off by about half of one percent today. Well, China's economy continues to show signs of weakness. China was expected to report increases in December export and import activity this morning. But both of those figures came in negative for the month. Chinese exports posted their biggest monthly drop in two years, and imports fell the most since July of 2016. All right, we have lots of business news to discuss. Let's bring in Ed Butovsky, managing partner at Chapwood Investments. Ed, good to have you with us. Ed, uh, markets seem to be concerned to this, uh, about the slowdown in China economic data. How much of a worry is it to you? Well, the, the worry is, and by the way, thanks for having me on. The, the worry that, that I have is that stocks already have priced in certain economic data. Let's remember, stocks will move six to nine months ahead of that economic data. So if something comes in as a surprise, that's concerning. And right now, China, nobody knows what's going on there. I mean, you know, we have the slowdown across the board much worse than people thought. And that probably tells us that it's going to get a lot worse throughout this year. So markets don't like surprises and this is a surprise that's why we opened up this morning you know on the downside the positive thing michelle and people aren't talking about is that 401k investors are now able to start putting money back into their accounts you know most people forget that around october of every year the 401k contributions end so you have something very positive happening at the beginning of every single year and that is those 401 contributions so if there's ever a time that you want to take a position it might be right now Although I caution people for the rest of the year, I see a very different picture than the positive forecasts that are out there across the board. All right, we'll get into your picture in a second, Ed, but let's look at the positive here. Is there a way that if China is facing uh, some tough economic times that it's in a weaker position in these trade negotiations uh, with the president and his team and uh, it acquiesces to more of his demands? Or do you see China going the other way in, in response to the economic pressure with the with regards yeah, to trade negotiations. Yeah, and, and one thing we know about the Chinese, they don't look day to day, week by week, and they're not really worrying about earnings reports on a month to month basis. They take a very long time horizon. So right now having short term you know, weakness is not going to change their negotiation position at all. So do not think that whatsoever. They're, they're a strong country, they're going through a rough time, but they're also forecasting lower growth which makes sense because the forecasts were so high. Um, so I just don't think it's going to play right. into the trade negotiations at all. Well, speaking of negotiations, uh, as we reported earlier, British Prime Minister Theresa May not making much headway in negotiating a Brexit deal. What does this yeah. mean for, for the U.S. markets and, and for the U.S. economy? What's the impact yeah. if uh, this completely falls apart this week? Well, it sure sounds like it is about to fall apart. And again, there's that uncertainty, although this isn't a new uncertainty, you know, over six months, you know, or, or really even longer than that, there's been tremendous uncertainty. I just don't really understand what the British are doing. I mean, you make a vote and you lose, you lose, but it doesn't seem to be that way over yeah. there. Um, I'm not, I'm not that smart about what goes on, you know, overseas and, and especially in the United Kingdom, but they were supposed to break away, break away. Let's get on with it. Does but it, open it doesn't up, seem like that's going to happen that what way. What does it mean for, for the U.S. and uh, its economy? Is it a, a boon or does it open up uh, perhaps more trade opportunities for the U.S. to negotiate on better terms if uh, the U.K. Yeah. is in dire straits? Well, if the, if the U.K. does break away, which, which I hope they do and they should, it opens up a lot more opportunity. Competition is great. And when you have this major European Union, which we do, it, it doesn't allow for a lot of competition. I love competition, and I really hope the U.K. breaks away. It'll make them more efficient. It'll make for better competition, better trade back and forth. I think it's a very big positive, and I think you're going to see other countries do it, too, all throughout Europe. But right now, they just it seems like the vote was cast, and to break away one, but now they're coming back and saying, wait, 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 we didn't really pay too much attention to this. We should have, and they didn't. All right, and yet you're forecasting even more countries are going to pull out of the EU. We will have to talk about that another time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ed Butowski. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you.